Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at homeotic genes, Hox genes, Hox genes and animal development, and then we'll finish with a summary. So one of the roles of DNA, apart from coding for proteins, is to contain the instructions necessary for building up the bodies of organisms. So obviously we know that DNA contains the genes to make the proteins that make up all the organisms that we find. But of course, if the DNA just made all of these proteins randomly, it would be a complete jumble and mess of cells and proteins. How do we make sure that plants have a flower at the top and leaves pointing out to the side? And how do we make sure it has a particular shape? How do we make sure that fungi grow in a particular shape too? How do we make sure that elephants have a head at the front and four legs, and not a leg sticking out of its back? So for all of these different animals, and of other kingdoms too, DNA helps to instruct how the organism is built up. So the way it does this is that DNA contains genes which regulate morphogenesis. Morphogenesis is the process which causes an organism to form its shape. So when we start off as an early embryo, we have a very limited design to our shape. It's just a ball of cells essentially for a few weeks. But eventually we start developing axes and certain directions to our body. We get a head end and a tail end. We get a left and right and we get different axes in our body. And eventually when we're born and when we're finally done developing, we've got a fully formed shape. And the genes that control this shape design are called homeotic genes. There's a certain subset of homeotic genes called homeobox genes, and these contain a 180 base pair length DNA called a homeobox. So just to go through that again, we've got homeotic genes which organize the shape of organisms. So one of the homeotic genes is called a homeobox gene. So here we have a homeobox gene. So it's obviously a certain length of nucleotides in DNA. And within that homeobox gene, we have a certain part of 180 nucleotides in length, or base pairs in length, and this part is called the homeobox. So the homeobox gene contains a homeobox within it. The homeobox's sequence, which is only 180 base pairs, is highly conserved in plants, animals, and fungi. So by saying highly conserved, what this means is that it's kept through evolution, and it's basically the same for many different organisms. So the homeobox is the same order exactly of base pairs for plants, fungi, and animals. So that all of their homeobox sequences are exactly the same, which means that it's conserved through time in evolution. So just for a definition, conserved genes are genes that have remained unchanged throughout the evolution of different descendant species. So all of the species tend to have this homeobox. The homeobox sequence, which is kept the same in all different species we've mentioned, codes for a specific sequence of 60 amino acids, which makes sense because if it's 180 nucleotides long and three nucleotides code for an amino acid, then we're going to have 60 amino acids because that's a third of 180. So it's 60 amino acids inside the whole synthesized protein which was made by the whole homeobox gene. And there's a specific sequence called a homeodomain. So let's just sort out these hierarchies. So in the DNA, we had a homeobox gene. And the homeobox gene is going to code for a protein which looks like this. And then we said before that inside the homeobox gene we have a homeobox, a specific 180 base pair long conserved region. And this part contains the information to make a homeodomain. So in this protein, this region is coded for by the homeobox and it's called the homeodomain. So there's lots of different levels of hierarchy with very similar names. So just be clear on what, which is which here. The homeodomain sequence, which remember is that part in the protein, folds into a specific shape and it has three alpha helices. So in the diagram here, the homeodomain is this part and each of these blue cylinders is an alpha helices or an alpha helix. So we've got alpha helix one, two, and three. The second and third alpha helix create a helix turn helix, which consists of two alpha helices connected by a short loop of amino acids. So when we say helix turn helix, what this means is, is that we get a helix and then a turn and then a helix again. So it's just got three parts to it. So if we look at the diagram here, we can see that if you follow the protein, we've actually got one, two, and then three. So what we have is between second and three, we've got the second alpha helix and then a turn of amino acids and then the third alpha helix and then the protein carries on. So this is what we call the helix turn helix. So this is just a part of the protein structure in this homeodomain, in this overall protein. And why are we talking about this specific point in the protein? Well, the helix turn helix shape allows the protein to bind to DNA, and it regulates the transcription of nearby genes. 
So other parts of DNA can bind to this helix turn helix structure in the homeo domain, and it regulates transcription of genes. So because of this, any protein which contains a homeo domain is therefore a transcription factor. So the homeo box gene created a protein, and in that homeo box gene we had a homeo box, which made the homeo domain part of that protein. This is where we see that helix turn helix structure, and this in turn can bind to other parts of DNA and either upregulate or downregulate the gene transcription. So it's a transcription factor. So homeo box genes we've mentioned code for those homeo domain proteins, but there's a subset of homeo box genes called Hox genes. So just to go through the hierarchy again, we have homeotic genes, which are all the genes that help organize an organism shape. Within this, we have a subset called homeo box genes, and we've already said that that gene codes for a protein with a homeo domain in it, and that's the transcription factor. And there are various types of this. And one of the types of homeo box genes are the Hox genes. Hox genes are basically a type of homeo box gene which are only found in animals. So insects, mammals, crustaceans, all animals have Hox genes. The Hox gene's purpose is to set up the correct positioning of body parts in an organism. So for example, if we look at an organism, the body parts are in the right place. The head is towards the front of the body. The abdomen is in a particular position on the body too. For a fly, the wings have to be on the back and they have to face the right way and be paired. The legs have to be facing down to the ground. So there's a lot of arrangement of the body and more than we think. These Hox genes are found basically in all bilaterian or bilaterian animals. So bilaterian basically means that they have this halfway symmetry, i.e. animals which are mirrored down their middle. So humans, we have two arms, two legs, and if you split us down the middle, we look identical each side. So these are all animals which have basically two halves to them. So these Hox genes are found in all of these animals, suggesting that Hox genes must have existed in a common ancestor of all bilaterians. So all animals which have two halves to them seem to have a common ancestor which had these Hox genes, and so the Hox genes got passed to all of them. What we also find is that several Hox genes are found next to each other on a chromosome. So they tend to be arranged in clusters. So instead of being scattered across the genome, we see them clustered together on various parts of a chromosome. In some animal lineages, including vertebrates like ourselves, Hox genes have been duplicated or copied, resulting in multiple Hox clusters. So for example, these are each a different cluster of Hox genes. And what you can see, particularly for these ones, is that we've got copies of Hox genes on different chromosomes. So they do seem to crop up more than once. And they're clearly very important because when a Hox gene becomes mutated or damaged, the body parts end up developing in the wrong place on the body. And we call this a homeotic mutation. So through experiments, we've seen that in flies, if certain Hox mutations are found, sometimes we get legs developing on the head instead of antennae, which are supposed to develop. So they're very important in positioning different parts of the body in the right place. The Hox genes are really important in developing animal structure. The Hox genes get expressed very early on in embryonic development along the anterior to posterior or head to tail axis of the organism. So most organisms with this double half structure have a head end or an anterior end and they have a tail end or a head to tail axis and they develop along the length of the head to tail axis. It's interesting because the order of genes on the chromosomes, so these Hox genes on the chromosomes, matches the expression patterns along the embryo, so there's a spatial linearity. So what this means is that if we look at the chromosome and line up all the Hox genes in order, what we see is that the ones for the head area are at one end of the chromosome, and the ones that develop the tail area are at the other end, and the ones for the middle area are found in the center. So the chromosome has already got this spatial organization of head hox genes at one end and tail ones at the other. And to add to this, as well as spatial linearity, the expression of the genes also occurs in temporal order. So we start with the expression of the anterior hox genes and we move posteriorly. So the chromosomes have this spatial arrangement and the head ones get expressed first, developing the head. And then secondly, we get the middle ones. And then thirdly, we get the ones at the tail end. So there's temporal order as well. This phenomenon is what we call collinearity, and scientists don't really know or understand the importance of these patterns for the Hox genes, 
and it's beyond the scope of A-level, but it's still an interesting theory. When each of these Hox genes is expressed, it encodes for a specific Hox protein, and this protein acts as a transcription factor. So we've said how this is the homeobox protein, and it's got a homeo domain with three alpha helices, which is where it binds to DNA and acts as a transcription factor. So what the transcription factor goes and does is it binds to specific regions of DNA, and it switches on or off a specific set of genes in each segment. So the Hox gene codes for this protein, the protein goes and binds to DNA, and it turns on particular genes so that they can be expressed. And the different pattern of activated genes helps to promote the correct development of each body segment by regulating how the cells divide by mitosis, how they die by apoptosis, and how they differentiate. So for example, we'll get Hox genes on a certain part of the chromosome, which make the genes involved in the head structures, and it will control where cells divide, where they die, what shapes they form, and things like developing the eyes and the structures in the head. And as we move along the body, more and more Hox genes will start causing development of the body towards the tail end. So it controls which genes are turned on in which area, for example, turning the eye genes on in the head rather than in the tail. And so this is very important control for the buildup of the organism. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revise smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.